What he said was his has been ours all along. We're gonna tear the devil's kingdom down. We're going, going up to the high places. Going up to the high Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Good evening. I want to thank you for joining us this evening. I wanted to share some Memorial Day reflections with you. So I want to thank you for joining me. I want to thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Please know that we appreciate you joining us and sharing with us on Memorial Day. I want to talk to you on the topic of why we forget. I know all of us have had those frustrating moments where we couldn't remember what we wanted to say. And then we have to think around different ways of remembering. But I want to talk to you about why we forget in light of Memorial Day. First, I think we forget because we neglect that which has gone on before us. I want to say that to you again. We neglect what has gone on before us. You know, I do, and I'm so thankful for the progressive attitude, for a progressive heart of change, but I also respect and admire those who do not neglect remembering the past. In order not to neglect, you have to set aside a, a time. You have to make a diligent and deliberate and intentional place and time to remember the things that have been given to you, shared with you by God and by others in your past. My past Christian walk is marked by Sunday school teachers, Sunday school teachers who bought me a new pair of shoes. Sunday school teachers who invited me to their home and included me in their family gathering. Sunday school teachers who every Sunday were faithful to deliver the word of God. I choose not only to remember that, but to do so intentionally and to try to share with others what has been given to me. You cannot neglect your past. If you neglect the past, you soon lose the sense of direction, your sense of well-being, your purpose for being where you are. So first, don't neglect your past. Don't neglect Memorial Day. Don't neglect its purpose and its reasons. You know as well as I do that it's more than a barbecue. It's more than a picnic. It's more than a family gathering. It is an intentional time set aside to remember those who have given the ultimate gift of their life in service for their country. I think it is a shame if you have gone all day long and have not paused to remember, not set aside not called a halt to all the festive occasions to remember you enjoy what you enjoy because others who went before you paid the ultimate price. It is a way of saying thank you. It is a way of expressing gratitude. Second, I think that we forget because we have become, I'm just going to say, so taken up, so carried away with thinking that everything that is past is valueless. It's like an old pair of tennis shoes. You just throw it away. Well, I'm going to tell you, I do appreciate the future. I do appreciate forward thinking. Let me say that to you again. But I value highly those things that got me where I am today. I value highly those who have invested in me. And I know you do too, but it's easy to forget. We have become so inattentive to those who proceeded before us. What do you mean? Well, when's the last time you went to a nursing facility? When is the last time you went to a nursing home? When is the last time you stopped to have a conversation with an elder? If you only knew if you only knew the price that some of them pray, paid for what you enjoy today, that beautiful sanctuary you set in, those glorious, glorious opportunities of the now have come because someone preceded us. And we're so inattentive to them. We, well, 
I won't say that people ignore the elderly, but they do not value them. They do not honor them. They do not respect them. They do not admire them. Don't let me bore you. I'm just simply telling you what we're doing and why we forget. Our, our attention is only for our time and our place. We think about our time, our place, now. Well, I do know Jesus said, occupy till I come. I will be busy with today. I will, I will exercise every opportunity to fully, fully apprehend any event or thing that is happening in my now. But I'm going to tell you that there was someone who paid the ultimate price for what you enjoy today. I plead with you today. I, I know the value of our time and place. Always enjoyed history. My father fought in World War II. Dad would seldom think about it or talk to us about it. But this week I was reading a book that really was just a novel. When I came across an amazing part in that novel, it was talking about the theater of war that my father fought in. And I read a statement in that book that my father often said to me. He said, as we walked up through Ger Germany, excuse me, through Italy, going into Germany, there would be snipers that would be in those villages or in those towns. And said those snipers would pick them off, pick off our servicemen as they were marching through those villages. My dad said, I don't know how they miss me. I saw men fall on my right and on my left. You know, they came home with a box of medals, a purple heart, other things they came home with, but they came home with more than that. They came home with memories that would never leave them. You know, I watched a movie recently. I'm not a movie goer, but I do watch them on occasionally. I think it was called Heartbreak Ridge, the powerful story of a man who was a conscientious objector but yet he gave his life, everything that he had. While he was not killed in battle, he survived. He certainly was the means of many being saved. Makes me want to stand up proud. You know, there's something about Memorial Day that should affect our lives. It should call us to unity. America needs unity. It seems like everywhere you turn, there's strife. Seems like everywhere I look, there's discord and, and challenges of anger and disruption. And may I say, not only do I think on Memorial Day that we should remember our servicemen, but I believe since 9-11, there has been an awakening and awareness to us that we need to remember our emergency personnel. You cannot mark your life with things that you can remember. And two things I will always remember is where I was when John F. Kennedy was assassinated. You remember that? Second, I will always remember where I was when 9-11 occurred. I will always remember. I watched it on television. We had just come into the house and the TV was on and they were showing it. I watched those firemen I watch those firemen. I, I want to salute our policemen. I want to salute our service men. I want to salute our first responders. I don't think any of us will ever look at first responders again like we did as we watched them in Katrina, as we watched them at 9-11, as they risked their lives for their nation, for their fellow man. We forget too easy, church. We forget too easy. We put it under a little carpet somewhere, and I hope that this Memorial Day that you will have a stirring of memory and of heart for those that are have been in our EMS, who have been our first responders. And can I draw you a little closer? Can I, can I just draw you a little closer? Now we've got to put nurses and doctors 
who have risked their lives because of the coronavirus, who, who have exposed themselves. Oh, I know they weren't in a war zone. I know that. But I want to tell you they were there to save lives, to fight for their nation and for their country. Don't forget that, that it was a doctor or a nurse or an attendant that was there to minister. I just am talking about the sacrifices of how easy we forget. We act as though the present is all that matters and the past is just something to be cast away. Yes, I believe in living in the now. Yes, I know the power of the present. Yes, I know you can't live in the past, but I'm going to tell you we have to respect and appreciate it. I believe that in memory we unite. The second thing is, I believe that Memorial Day brings some dignity. I always appreciate our Memorial Day services at our church. We go the extra mile. We step forward. We step up to bring unity and to bring dignity. You know, I know there's a lot of a lot of lightness and a lot of looseness and and a lot of frivolity. And I know humor certainly has its place. But I want to tell you a little dignity would do well on Memorial Day. The dignity of respect, the dignity of admiration, the dignity of remembering deliberately and intentionally. And third, I believe that Memorial Day brings honor. The Bible says giving honor, giving honor. We honor those. I know you have seen scenes and pictures from Arlington. I know you have been to a military grave site. I have more than once. It's an amazing sight to look across acres of graves, I want to tell you the ultimate price was paid for what you enjoyed today, what I enjoy today. A life was laid down. But we act as though the present is the only thing that matters. And again, I understand that we have to live today. But I believe that we're safer in our life because of those who have preceded before us. Memorial Day is to remember, it's to respect. I know there will be a lot of summer celebrations today. I know a lot of people are going to get outside finally, and they're going to enjoy, but it might do you well to stop by that place where your loved one was buried, to take a moment, well, it doesn't have to be an hour, but to pay them the honor that they rightly deserve for their labors, their sacrifices. I know that there are others who have suffered while they may not have given their life in death. They came back with horrific memories. I met men from the Persian Gulf War who could not sleep for days. Listen to me, there has a price been paid. And I know death is the ultimate, but some of them have a living death. They've never been able to pull their life together after Vietnam. Never. They relive those horrors. I say to you, I realize and understand the ultimate sacrifice is to die. But some of our wounded living every day, every day has been a recall of what they lived through, what they went through. And so while we go barbecue, it would be good if we would stop and remember and take a time and a place Let me say this to you. In our age of every 
ever accelerating change. Did you hear what I just said? In our age of ever accelerating change, a new gadget every day, new communication every day, uh, something always, I mean, your life is changing so fast, it's a blur. In this age of ever accelerating change, and you know, if you don't change, you will be left behind. But I tell you, sometimes I just want to throw an anchor. I just want to throw an anchor. And remember the diligent hard work and sacrifice of those who have made this day that we live in so convenient. I want to close with just this day, this, this thought. You know, one thing the Bible continually impresses upon us to teach our children, to teach our children. I encourage you, I encourage you to sit down and teach your children the wonderful past, the wonderful heritage that belongs to them. I don't know about you, but in my family, and I'm sure in yours, there were those who made sacrifices. While they came home with a degree of health, maybe unscathed, they're still worthy of our recommendation and our memories. Would you pray with me, Father? I pray for those who have given so much for our nation, not only, Father, for our nation, but for our churches, those who labored in the heat of the day, these, those who made sacrifices of finances, sacrifices of of time, sacrifices of many kinds. So I remember them to you today. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I remember my pastor, so dear to my life, so dear to my life. His name was Louis Schultz. I remember another dear friend, Herbert Hilton, who pastored, Bo, pastored Beaumont Sabine Tabernacle so many years. Great, great men. I remember Dr. Charles Cookman. He was a father to so many of us here in the North Carolina district. Now, who do you remember? You know, some of them are still living. You could call them. The other day I called a dear friend in Texas just to hear his voice, just to remember. Why don't you reach out to someone today? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for our president. In the name of Jesus, I pray for our Congress. I pray for our Supreme Court. I pray for our nation. God, that you will help us rise in faith in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Thank you for supporting us. It, it is, we couldn't make it without you. Thank you. And God bless you. You can help us many ways. You can help us through our website. You can help us through Easy Tide. You can help us through the mail. And I want to thank you. God bless you.